I'm Richard Kalina, Chair of the Department of Theater and Visual Arts. I've had the pleasure of working with Bill at Fordham for 25 years now, and of being his friend for many years before that. This is a particularly joyful occasion, the official unveiling of Dream, Bill's magnificent painting, adding yet another bit of visual splendor to this stunning law school building and to the Lincoln Center campus as a whole, not to mention the university at large, as well as the even larger community of those New Yorkers who delight in the art of our time. If you were in my contemporary art history class and were forced to sit in a darkened classroom for a very long time and listen to me, I could go on and on and on about this painting. There is so much to say. But sadly, I only have your attention for a brief period, so rather than speaking of Bill's well-earned place in contemporary art history, his contributions to abstraction, and to the engaging formal intricacies, particularly perspectival and chromatic, of this very large-scale and ambitious work, I will address something that I thought I wouldn't actually deal with at all, the title. Titles are odd creatures, especially of abstract work. You can call, say, a landscape, Monsanto Victoire, as Cezanne did, or an arrangement of objects, still life with plaster cast, makes eminent sense. But abstraction? Maybe something neutral like Kandinsky's Improvisation 28 or Mondrian's Composition Number 7, or possibly something not really to the point but kind of sexy, like Frank Stella's own colored stripe painting, Marquis de Portago, named after a notorious Spanish playboy and extraordinarily unlucky race car driver. But dream, hmm. Bill mentioned something about students following their dreams, which is great, but unfortunately brings to mind my junior high school graduation speaker, who sternly advised us to hitch our wagons to a star. Since she was Anna M. Cross, the New York City Commissioner of Corrections, the admonition carried a strongly implied threat. Hitch up, boys and girls, or find yourself a good Bales bondsman. But dreams are complicated things. Of course, the term refers to one's hopes, plans, and ambitions, something all of us, especially at university, should assiduously cultivate. Yes, do follow your dream. A liberal arts university with a wonderful faculty and staff and thousands of great students is a place to find something that you never imagined would be there and, moreover, would be readily, readily available to you if you worked hard enough and cared passionately enough to make it your own. But a dream is also something else, a strange land that we visit every night, rational and ordered on one hand, but one in which, in an Alice in Wonderland way, things are in odd and potentially disturbing spatial relationships to each other, sometimes big, sometimes small, sometimes confronting us straight on, sometimes turned or half turned away, a place where past and present mingle, sometimes comfortably, sometimes not, a place where things have meaning, truly important meaning and reference, but you're not sure how, why, or what. A place where the specific jostles the generalized, where the real and physical and the abstract and ephemeral are equal partners. And so it is in this painting. It is a very complex construction, formally, referentially, and psychologically. It sits there nice and flat on the wall, but it sits ever so uneasily. The word dream also brings to my mind the mythic and artistic structure of the Australian Aboriginal peoples. Their cosmological worldview is referred to as the dreaming and is a compilation, mostly secret, except for those privy to it, of creation and ancestor narratives, a codification of the means of communication between the human and the spirit world, as well as a set of maps for finding one's way and providing nourishment and shelter for you and your clan in a land, often harsh desert, so forbidding and dangerous that none of us here would survive in it unaided and on our own for more than a few days. Bill's painting is also a map and distillation of the art narratives that provide coherence to today's visual culture, a culture that so often seems to exist in its own modern or postmodern desert. This painting is a truly special work of art, and we are all pleased that it will offer its own unique sustenance to generations of the Fordham family. Thanks, Bill, and thank you all for coming.